Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Trading the Markets. Um, so this is a paid class edition, but I'm going to do it as a free class just to give you guys a peek of what we work on. And I also want to cater to newbies this month because it's newbies November. So I'm going to go over some old concepts. If there's not really much newbies on, then we could brush through and get to like more um, advanced stuff. But I definitely at least want to touch on it and I probably will repeat some of these. All right, let's let's go. All right. So um, what is a stock option? You know what? Let's see. Can anybody tell me in their own words what a stock option is before I tell you in my own words? Anybody would could explain it? I don't know if anybody's available to, to talk right now. Nobody? All right, now I'll just go, I'll just go into it. So options is what's called a derivative, right? So derivative just means it, it, its price is derived from stocks. It gets its price from stocks. All right, simple enough. So it's, it's something that follows stock that is not a stock because they have what's called contracts. So it's not shares, all right? And what this contract does, it locks in a specific price either a buying price or a selling price. If it locks in the buying price, it's called a call. If it locks in the selling price, it's called a put. Now, all these contracts control, because so basically it's like a layaway, right? Layaway contract for 100 shares of stock. You understand? So one contract, it's like a layaway contract, locking in that good price that you may want, right? To buy 100 shares later on in the future. That is the purpose of it, right? But this contract by itself has value. Why? Because you pay what's called a premium. So in order to buy it, you have to pay what's called a premium. All right? So oh, I think I see one newbie. I'm gonna I can re explain this again for the newbies. But so far, does anybody lost? Does it, does it make sense? Um, does anything not make sense? Any questions? I know. I think most of you guys kind of know this already that's on right now, but definitely feel free to stop me as I explain it. All right. So I'm going to re-explain it. I see you logged in sauce. All right. So what I, so again, what is a stock option? It's a derivative. That means it gets, it gets its price from the stock. It's a contract. It's not shares. And, and basically it's a lay, it's like a layaway contract locking in either the buying price call which is a call or the selling price for 100 shares so this layaway contract you're locking in the price for 100 shares of stock that makes sense to you guys i don't want to make sure that's clear um, let me shrink this a little bit i i see you sauce i just you know you're the newbie right now so i'm really breaking it down for you bro OG. So like I was saying, you're giving your option is a contract that locks in the buying price or the selling price. All right. So it's like a layaway contract. So it's like, so you put like a down payment, which is called a premium. That's what you pay for this contract. Now, since this contract controls a hundred shares of stock, you can make more money with less capital. It's called leverage. All right. So now when you see the premiums, they're gonna be listed in what looks like cents and dollars. But whatever you see, that's per one share. And remember it controls a hundred. So whatever price you see, you're gonna to have to multiply it by a hundred. So for example, right here, here's, here's, some, here's some option contracts from the past, right? That I traded, right? So right here, you see how this says 20 cents right here? That means $20. So in order for me to buy one contract, it costs $20, right? Does that make sense to you guys? So what happened is that these contracts went from $20 to $23. So per each contract, I made $3. Does that make sense? So I think I had maybe like right here, it's showing I have three of them, but I had more, I sold some. So maybe I had about, 
what five five times three four or five of them and that's why that's why i was like 13 all the profit on this trade for example but i just i just want to keep it simple i'm not going to go into too much detail when you see it in cents these are the premiums when you see this in cents that's the premium that's how much i paid per contract they went up from 46 to 51. so this is how you make the profit is basically wholesaling at its finest because you have a market of people that's always buying and selling. You can always sell something versus you trying to buy a TV and flip it. You trying to buy something else and flip it. There's a market where everybody's buying and flipping all day long. All right, so going back to this. And if you have questions, definitely let me know because I'm making this as simple as possible for my newbies right now because newbies November. So anybody have a question? All right, cool, stop me. Um, so now remember these options, it's, a, it's like a layaway contract where you're locking either the buying price or the selling price for a hundred shares at a later date, which is called the expiration date. All right. So I know it's a couple moving, it's a couple moving, um, factors, but the main thing is that you're buying a layaway contract. You're locking in either buying or selling pro um, price for a hundred shares by a certain date. Now, how do you make money? How does it work? So for example, let's talk about calls and puts. So for example, if you if, if you buy a call, right? And you're locking in the buying price, right? So I'll give you an example. So let's say you have a stock, right? Let's say uh, Apple, right? And I, I'll just make a brand. I'll just make up a company, ABC stock, right? So there's this company called ABC, right? And their stock right now, it's $2, right? Let's say it's $2 a share. Now, if I buy a call, I think it's going to go up because I want to lock in the buying price so that when it goes up, I can still buy it at a cheaper price. So let's say I buy a $2.50 call. If I buy a $2.50 call, I'm locking in that $2.50 price. Or make it even easier, I'll just make it a $2 call, right? $2 call. So if I buy a $2 call, I'm locking in that $2 price. So now, when this stock price goes from $2 to $3, I can still buy, buy it at $2. Isn't that valuable? to be able to buy something at a cheaper price because you got it early, even when the price goes up, you can still buy it at a cheaper price. So because of that, so now only one more factor, the um, the premium. So how much do I pay for this $2 call? So let's say I paid um, 60 cents, right? 60 cents, that's $60, all right? So let's pay, say I paid, when the price was $2, I paid 60 because it went from two to three, this same $60 um, that I paid, the value that I paid for the $2 call, I will go from 60 to $1.20, for instance. So basically that's $120. So just from a dollar move, I was able to double my, 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 my initial investment by locking in a better price than what the future held. Any questions? Is that confusing? Oh. Nope. Go ahead, go ahead. If you got a question, definitely let me know. Makes sense. All right, good, good. Good, good. So we're gonna keep go keep going. So so this is because you gotta understand. Let's say I bought 200. I, let's say I so instead of let's say I didn't do this and I just bought shares, right? So now if, the, if it's two dollars a share, it will cost me two hundred dollars to buy these hundred shares. And then when it went to two hundred to, to when it went from two hundred dollars to three hundred, uh, when it went to two dollars to three dollars, it would, my two hundred dollar investment would become three hundred dollars. So you see, I made a fifty a fifty um percent gain by putting up more bread when I can make a hundred percent gain by putting up less bread. So this is a 100% gain. This is a 50% gain. 
That makes sense? So with options, with less money, you can make more if you're right. All right? Let's keep going. All right? Um, so basically, you're betting that the stock will make your expected move towards your strike price by expiration. What is your strike price? The $2 call. $2 call. That $2 is the strike price. That's that's the strike price right there. I'm going to make it messy. All right. So let's keep let's let's move along. I think you guys got this this part down. What you pay for is the premium expiration date. Strike price is what you're buying. If I'm buying a three dollar call, three dollars is my strike price. Buying a one dollar call, one dollar is my strike price. All right. So let's keep going. All right. So you guys know if you think it's going to go up, you're going to buy a, a call. If you think it's going to go down, you're going to buy a put. But um, so I explained, I explained the call. Let me explain the put. Let me explain the put. So the put, you're locking in the selling price. So, so now let's say same scenario. I'm going to give you a scenario. Let's see a, the same stock, ABC, right? Let's say, yeah, you, knew, you know, the price was $2 a share, right? So it's two dollars a share. So now let's say I think it's gonna go down. So let's say now the price goes down to one dollar a share. So now we're going the opposite direction. So it goes down to one dollar a share. Now, if I buy a two dollar put, two dollar put, I'm locking in the selling price. So even if it goes down to a dollar, I can still sell it at two. So that's how you make your money by locking in the selling price so that when things go down, you can still sell it at a higher price. Now, instead of actually selling 100 shares of stock, you just sell it based off of your premium goes up. So for example, let's say this $2 put, again, I'm gonna say it's gonna cost 50 cents, right? Which is really $50, right? Now, it could be a similar scenario. This, this $2 put, when the price is, one dollar this is going to go up to let's say 120 120 dollars so again well for one thing this allows you to make money on the way down usually with stocks most people make money on the way up unless they're able to short the stock but you got to have a certain amount of money to be able to short stocks so the options give you an advantage where you have limited risk and you could bet to the upside or bet to the downside based off of what you know, all right? So that's basically it in a, in a nutshell. You know what I mean? So I think we should go to, over some examples, like real examples. Um, but before I do that, right? Um, I just wanna make sure you guys understand all these terms and then we're gonna go into some, some live examples. So strike price, that's the price that I'm locking in, right? Um, so now there's something called in the money and out the money. And there's another one called at the money, which is ATM, at the money, right? So I'm going to explain this. Um, it's very important for you to understand this, this concept right here, especially if you're trading options. Let's see if I can find the slide. All right. Well, better yet, all right. I'll just go to actual. I'll just go to Rob Mahoney real quick, just to give you guys live examples. Oh, Robin Hood. Hold on. Logged in a little bit. Give me a second, guys. That's a Four seven eight six one four. All right, I'm in Robin Hood. I've been logging into this in so long. Let's see. So we're gonna go to an option, for example, and just go through it. So let's let's look at um Apple. Let's look at Apple, for example. Well, let me clear these drawings. 
Give me one second, guys. Let me just log into this and then pop it, pull it up. All right. All right, so let me share my screen. All right, so we're gonna go over live examples so you can understand um, how this actually works. So right here is an Apple. If I wanna buy Apple, I could type in the amount, I could buy it in shares, I can buy it in dollars, right? But if I wanna trade Apple options, I have to click this tab right here that says trade Apple options. This tab will not be active unless you basically um, activate option trading on your platform. So generally in the beginning, you won't have this option, but there's a way for you to activate it. Once you activate it, you'll have this option. It's basically you have to enable option trading. Um, and the way you would do that, you go to your account, you go to the profile. Not profile, hold on, I've been on Robin a little bit. Um, Investing, yeah, right here. So this is where you can enable and disable different um, features on your on your account, including options. All right, but um, let me go back to what I was doing. So Apple, right? So now let's say I want to trade Apple. I go to trade Apple options. You guys see this right here? So pay attention. Robinhood it makes it very simple. That's why I'm using it just to show you how simple everything is on different platforms it won't be as simple looking so here's your strike price that's the price i'm locking in break even lets you know how much you got to move to break even this this tells you how much the price has changed from yesterday and this is the actual price of the premiums of how much you actually pay all right so now let's 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 go over this whole this so this whole thing is called the option It's called the option chain, option chain. Why? Because it moves like a chain and you'll, you'll see. All right. So now let me pick a different color. Let's do this. So this right here, that's the share price. That's how much Apple is right now. 135, 20, 27, right? So now this line is called at the money, ATM, at the money. And mind you, we're looking, so right now we're, we're talking about buying calls, right? So we're focusing on the calls. So for the calls, anything under this line is going to be called in the money. I'll use a different color. Hold on. So all this in the money. In the money. So you could buy these, the 135 strike price, 134 strike, 133, keep going down. These are all in the money. Why are they in the money? Because think about it. If you lock in the 134 price, you already have value because you can, you can buy it at 134, even though the price is 135. So therefore, you already have like a dollar and change in value already. That's why it's called in the money. Does that make sense to you guys? I just want to make sure that's clear in the money. So if you're buying an option, right, and it's and the strike price is lower than the actual price of the stock, then you're in the money. Now, if you buy an option and the price is higher than the current price of the stock, this is called out the money. You guys see that? So, yeah. all right, so the difference is when you buy out the money, your stock has to move more to break even. You need a bigger move. So for example, look at, so here's the expiration date. So these are stocks that are expiring November 11th. Now what you're gonna notice is the more time you put on it, the more expensive they get. So let's say I go out one week, next week. Look at how these numbers went up, 323. So let's talk about the premiums. So you guys can understand that. So right here. So now let's say I want to buy this 135 call that's slightly in the money, right? You can even call this at the money because it's the closest strike price that's closest to the actual share price. So if I wanted to buy this at the money slash in the money 
135 call, and it's gonna cost $2.25 per share. So can somebody tell me how much money would it cost me to buy this option right here? I know some of you guys in here know. How much would how much would it cost me? $225. Yep. So so if I want to buy this 135 call, it's gonna cost me $225 to buy this option, locking in that buying price of 135, even though the price is higher. So I have a potential to already break even faster than if I than if I went out there. So for me to break even. The price just has to hit 137.24. And if you notice, if you add 225 to this price, it gives you the break even. I know I just said a lot. Anybody want me to repeat? All right. So now, what is the benefit? Why, what's the benefit of buying this at 225? Well, think about this. I'm able to control, theoretically control 100 shares for 225, but Apple costs 135.26. So if I times this by 100, it would cost me 13,527 dollars to buy 100 shares. So instead of buying it outright, I'd rather pay 225 control 100 shares now if it goes up i can make money faster and i can make more money per per dollar move does that make sense to you guys so for example let's say the price goes up a dollar right so if the price went up a dollar this would go from 225 to 282 if it goes up two dollars it would go from 225 to 345 that's off a two dollar move you guys understand two dollar move but now if i look at this the stock goes up two dollars i would only make about two hundred dollars on top of this so let's say so let's say so we're gonna we're gonna so basically what we're saying is two dollar move right here so this is a two dollar move right and notice i'm using the chain to know how much i would make because what happens is that it would move up like a chain like like the price would like move up. So basically, if it's if it's under the line, it would move above the line. If it's, if it's above if it's above the line, it would move under the line, depending on where the price goes. So let's say the price is going up, and basically this will go would go under the line two spaces down, which is why I'm able to know that if I if this moves two dollars, the two twenty five would become three forty five. This is why it's called an option chain, and you can use it to know how much money you make. Now the interesting thing is. When you go out the money, you make more percentage per move, but it's also riskier versus if you're already in the money, you though you make less percentage per move, it's safer for you to break even. Any questions so far? Nobody got questions? All right, cool, cool. Let's keep, keep, keep it going then. So, like I was saying, um, it's all about what I mean, it's all about how much what you expect, how much do you expect the stock to move by a certain time? That's what determines whether you choose to go in the money, at the money, or out the money. Because if you're gonna go out the money, you're gonna need the stock to move more. But if it does move more, you'll make more. All right, I think that's pretty, pretty basic on that. Um, explaining how that works. Um, I guess we can go look at the other side now. Clear. So now let's look at the put side. It is pretty much the same, um, except this flip. So now this is the puts. So now this is basically going to be flipped. All right. So now this is still at the money line. We're going to call this the at the money line. All right. So now we're at the money, the closest option to the strike price, to the share price, is gonna be the at the money option, technically. But we can also call, we can also put another category. So remember before for the for the calls, um, below the line was, was in the money, now below the line is out the money. And above the line 
is in the money. Why? Because you're locking in the buying price. I mean, the selling price. You're locking in the selling price now. So you, the higher the number, if you start to go down, the better it is for you. So now, let's say um, I want to buy this 136 put. It's going to be in the money. And in order for me to break even by the expiration date, by Friday, this the price of Apple would have to reach 133.15 by Friday. But understand, if it goes down and it's not Friday yet, I can still make money. If it goes in my direction early, I get credit for, for it going in that direction, forward progress before the time limit, before the time limit reaches. Does that make sense to you guys? So even though this is my break-even price, this only matters on November 11th by the end of the day. So let's say you see Apple's 130, 135. Let's say tomorrow Apple drops down to 134. I would already start making money, even though it hasn't hit 133, because I'm making forward, forward progress towards the goal. And, and I still have time left. So, so the other thing, options are depreciating assets. They lose a little bit of money every single day. So it's like a, it's like it's like an hourglass of sand, and you have to beat the you have that expiration time limit. And every day you're getting closer to that, it's, it's depreciating, it's losing value. It's basically losing value every day. All right, any questions so far? Anybody have any questions? Straight? All right, keep it pushing. All right, so I think that. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I think I was muted. Um, I don't know if you guys heard what I was saying. But um, basically, I was saying that it's reverse for the puts and the money's above, out the money's below. You're locking in the buying price. So therefore, it's more favorable for you to already gain value. All right. So now let me switch gears and I'm going to go into um, some market news and um, how how we could take advantage of what's to come. All right, so let's see. All right, let's let's go. So right here, um, I'm gonna look at the S and P 500. So spy, this is the S and P 500, and I'm gonna go to the daily chart. I know I got a lot on the chart, but every bar represents the day. So if you look at today, the market opened up at 379 and closed at 374.13. So what's significant to me is the fact that we were kind of holding this trend line. We, so this orange line, we're kind of holding it. And now we break, we broken underneath it. So this could lead to more downside and the market could continue to go down. And if you notice, um, Bitcoin, right? Look at how much it came down to, um, today. So today it went from 18, 18, 577, closed today at 1588. And now we're around 1600. So notice that as crypto goes down, so does the market. And um, one of the reasons why this is happening is because of, um, let me go into it. Um, They're basically having a little, a little, a little war. Um, did I talk into it? Yeah. So, so basically, um, Binance. The let me see if I can find this article for you guys real quick. Google. All right, right here. So you guys see my screen? So another Wild West crypto claimed that another victim. Binance looks like the victor. So basically all these brokers are basically at war. They're, they're all trying to beat each other, pulling out money, putting in money. Um, and that's why crypto is down right now. It's not, not showing the rest of the article, but in a nutshell, that's, that's really what it is. You guys can check out this article if you guys want. Um, 
but just to stay on topic. So today, today was a really big sell-off um, all day. So tomorrow is CPI. CPI is a huge deal. Uh, even though there's crypto chaos and battles, a lot of things sold off. The bonds sold off today. Um, crypto sold off today. The dollar sold off today. So a lot of things are sold off today. But now for tomorrow, it's all about the CPI numbers. And does anybody know what CPI is or not know what CPI is? All right, I'm gonna assume you guys know what CPI is. But I forget. Yeah, you got anybody not know what CPI is? No, I forget. So CPI is the consumer price index. This in, this measures inflation. Inflation has been whooping the butt of America because if you guys notice, the price of everything went up. Gas went up, we went up. Think things that you would buy last year for Two dollars are now like two fifty or two something. You know what I mean? So that's inflation. So that happens because there's too many dollars in the in the economy. So remember all the stimulus money that we got early in the year. The, all that has caused too much money to be in circulation. Too much money to be in circulation means whatever we buy is worth a little bit less because then it costs you a little bit more because it's too much dollars. So in order to, to lower the number of dollars in circulation, the Federal Reserve has to basically increase the interest rate. By increasing the interest rate, it lowers it lowers the money circulation supply, and that is what's going to bring inflation down. So tomorrow, the numbers are going to come in on what CPI is going to be. So whenever CPI is high, the market overreacts and panics because they know that the Fed's going to have to raise the interest rate even more. But if CPI is comes good, comes down then that can help the market rally and go up. But either way, whenever the CPI comes, you will see the biggest moves in the market period. Usually whenever it's CPI or FOMC, basically the Federal Reserve controls the market. So whenever they make decisions about policies, it has huge volatility on the market. So like, for example, um, go to SPY. So this... I think this was, yeah, this was CPI. This was the last CPI. You guys see this big green um, bar right here? That was the last CPI. So notice how we had closed the previous day at 356. CPI came in hot. Numbers were higher than expected. So then all of a sudden the market dropped significantly to, from 356 to 349. And what's crazy, like I said, CPI also brings volatility, depending on what they say, depending on how they say things, the sentiment, it could change. And basically the market ran up heavily from there. And there's no that CPI just from this date, there were people, there was, there was somebody that turned $100 in options to 8,000 off of the last CPI, off the size of this huge candle. You guys catch that? So tomorrow is going to be another CPI. So I would tell anybody like if you trade, don't trade every day. Just wait for big days like this where now you can get some actual good movement and actually, you know, probably make a lot more than you would make on other days. Anybody have any questions with that? Cool. So I wanted to go over All right, I want to over something else. So tomorrow CPI, um, depending on what we do, we might open, we might open below. This might keep going lower. Or maybe CPI is good and then we, we, we come right back up in here. But either way, we're not going to guess. We're just going to react. In the moment, you will see. I remember when this was happening, I seen it. It felt like somebody was coloring it in with, with a crayon. That's how, that's how obvious the direction was. So you just got to wait. And um, Wait for structure and then react. Um, let me see. Yeah, I want to go over this trade. Let me see. So last week, um, I had um, started with $24, right? And then, hold on, not last week. So two weeks ago, I started with $24 and I raised my account from $24 to $100, right? Because with options, with trading, 
the, the point is not to be a hero. The point is to make a lot of small gains that compound that you can do consistently to grow your, your, um, your account. So last week I went from $24 to hundred and now, and while I was on vacation, I did maybe one or two trades. So I bought it from hundred dollars to about $134. I guess 175 yeah 175 so um so the main point is that if i can do this with small money i can do this with big money but i have to prove to myself and i have to be consistent enough to keep this going long enough where i have full confidence that i'm not going to mess up any questions anybody have any questions on what they see here No questions. All right. So that so that so so the whole point is to be consistent. And as you can see, if I go to the actual charts, I know we have only like a minute. Um, this is what I was trading, and I was trading it on the first. I think where is it? Right here. So this day. So this day right here is when I started trading this and. Um, just from that, I was able to make a good 70% off of this day, this candle right here. So when you get a big move in the, in the direction, you can make money, but just off of um, the highs and lows in here, I was able to, I was able to catch it probably somewhere in this wick and ride it up somewhere near the upper wick. And that was enough for me to almost double my money. All right. So that's all. Um, tune in next week. I'm gonna do the, the 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 free classes and the regular pay classes. Just want to give you guys a glimpse. And I haven't been around, so I want to do this extra class for everybody. So thank you for tapping in. I appreciate all you guys, and have a wonderful rest of your night. Peace out, everybody. Peace. All right. Happy trading. Yep.